Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the last EFL home game of the season against Ipswich Town and what a season it's been. Uh, we always think back before we record these pieces and try and knit the two together, uh, sometimes from way back. But of course, Ipswich Town, way back, weren't a football league club. They didn't come in the league till the 1930s. Uh, we came up against them quite a major way in 1960-61 season when uh, a town side led by the legendary Sir Alf Ramsey pipped Sheffield United uh, to the League Championship Division 2 that year by a point back in the days when you got two points for a win. Uh, they went up as the champions, we went up behind them. Um, one of my first ever home games before Dad and my brother started bringing me on a regular basis, sort of one-off game where you vaguely remember being brought, um, was the first season back up in the top flight under John Harris. Um, I don't know, before. And we, uh, we came and we beat Ipswich 7-0. I always remember that as a kid. And Ted Emsley told me, he knew Bobby Robson, and so Bobby was the manager of town then. Um, and he could recall coming off the pitch after and shaking his hand and saying, oh, look, Bob, you know. And Robson was distraught because he thought the Ipswich side he'd got was a really, really strong one and a good one. And he told him that the way they'd been dealt with at Bramall Lane on that day, so I'm going to have to have a long, hard think about this, I think. And obviously, time showed they were a great side. They weren't too many changes before they went off in uh, 78, played in the FA Cup final and also played in Europe, won the UEFA Cup. So uh, down the years, of course, we've come across them in the playoffs before. I remember being down there in 97, a semi-final at Portman Road on the second leg, which was going to the playoff final, of course, that year against Crystal Palace. Uh, so, you know, our paths have crossed quite a bit. But I was thinking about where in some way an Ipswich player or a former Ipswich player could have influenced me, and there is one. Many of you will be familiar with Paul Walker, and Paul Walker's a Sheffield lad through and through, and somebody that I've known through Sheffield United for many, many years. In fact, probably as long as I've been on the staff here. And of course, Paul, who's a gleadless lad, cut his teeth in radio on the breakfast show with Daryl Denham back in the day on Radio Hallam, Hallam FM. Um, and that's how he started. Paul always fancied radio he managed to get a work experience with Hallam they liked what they saw and he ended up sort of rising through and doing the sport inserts on the Hallam breakfast show uh, which was a brilliant show probably the most listened to one in the area at that point but of course it's the split and went its own ways and Paul went to Radio Sheffield uh, and in a sense Paul and that team that they had there then with Seth Bennett Steve Houghton people like that really redefined what Radio Sheffield were doing in terms of football heaven which at that period was probably, it was nearly an unmissable programme uh, of a night. Fresh, exciting, uh, got a lot of different points of view. All the staff here always listened to it, of course. Praise and Grumble, uh, started by the great Bob Jackson years before. But of course, they took that and really ran with it again. And it was no really, no surprise that Paul went on and did other things. And of course, now, if you watch the Quest highlights on a Saturday night when you get home, and very good they are too this season, it has to be said. Uh, Paul has become very much the voice of Quest and also does a lot of freelance stuff as well. You'll hear him on the BBC. Carved a really, really top-notch career out of his, uh, for himself out of it. And I'd like to think that I went somewhere to try to stop that originally. Um, many, many years ago we played away at Gillingham on a Saturday and I was going. At about nine o'clock on a Friday night I got a phone call from Paul was a bit struggling. Uh, Keith Edwards was the usual summariser, of course, and Keith had cried off at the 11th hour because he wasn't well. Uh, and I mean, let's face facts, if you didn't feel up to the mark, not many of us have fancy a journey all the way down to Gillingham. Uh, and I think, being all honest, state, I was the last number in the phone book and I can take one of those. Uh, and he asked me if I'd mind going down and doing the summarising, guest summariser with him. Now, my first reaction was, nah, I don't really fancy that, to be honest with you. It's a professional's job. But it's amazing how quickly your attitude can change when somebody offers you 50 quid. Now, me, obviously, 50 quid, is it a lot of money? Yeah. Do it. So, of course, uh, I agreed, naively. So, the following morning, bright and early, Paul Walker picked me up at the, uh, the Asda at Hansworth in Sheffield. And away down to the sunny Medways, we travelled uh, to Gilliam's Priestfield Stadium. Now, what I should tell you all when we get to this point is I'm already aware in the back of my mind that Neil Warnock, who was the manager of the club at that point, had been famously quoted as saying that every away performance, every away commentary on Radio Sheffield, he had his wife Sharon record it for him, and then the following morning over his cornflakes, he liked to listen back 
and find out what Paul Walker or Seth Bennett, Keith Edwards had said about him and the team's performance the following day. Now, maybe I should have thought about this before I agreed to do it, but you know what I mean? Pride comes before a fall. So here we are at Gillingham, sat up in the stand at the very back, and the game begins. Now, it would have to be said that our performance that day wasn't a particularly good one. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, we were awful. So at the back of the stand, I've sat with the uh, headphones on and the microphone with the professional that's Paul Walker sat at the side of me. And as the match sort of gets running on, he's asked me a couple of things and I'm miles out of it. You know, just, yeah, yeah, no. And I've used every, every phrase that you can think of in football, I've used. Sick as a parrot, game of two hours, boy done good. I've reeled a lot off. And I'm struggling a bit. And it's amazing, the minute somebody makes you do it for real, we can all be managers in the stand or in the pub after the match. But I tell you now, I learn a lot of respect for people that do it for a living on that one game. Now, bear in mind, I'm now painfully aware that not only is the performance a particularly bad one, but any comment that I come out with, our manager's going to hear over Sunday morning breakfast, and I'm having it on Monday morning. There's no doubt about that. Also, there's always a random chance that friends have heard it, and you're going to cop for a bit more. So it's the middle of this melee, and where does the Ipswich Town connection come? We had signed, probably that week, or certainly not long before that, a player who'd done really, really well his time at Ipswich Town, a player called Manu Thetis. Some of you might remember. Now, Manu Thetis, I think every game he ever played his entire life, was a defender. And we brought him in to, to strengthen the Sheffield United defence at that point. So in the game, substitutes made. Whoever's up front, I'm going to say Carlos Arba, though probably wrong, comes off. And who do we put on up front? Manu Thetis. Wow. Bless him. It was like watching me play up front for a Sunday League team at 51. Totally out of place. It didn't change play at all. In fact, it made it worse. Uh, and I can always remember at the end of the game, as we trudged off the pitch and the fans began to make the long, arduous journey back from Kent, Paul Walker turned to me and said, Thanks, John. I think you've probably put my career back a decade by that. Cheers, mate. And he meant it. <laughs> so every time I hear Paul Walker's voice, or I see Paul Walker, we always remind each other of it. But I'd like to think that I went some way as a friend and a colleague of completely and utterly destroying Paul Walker's career. Uh, I wish I'd got it on tape. I'd gladly let you have a copy of it. Because I think to this day, when pride comes before a fall, as we said, sometimes when I need to rein my confidence in a bit, I should probably just listen to my attempt at uh, summarising down at Gillingham in a game where a former Ipswich player, tenuous though it is, uh, came on and made no difference whatsoever to the outcome of the match. So that's a tenuous link today uh, between Ipswich Town, Sheffield United, of course the great John Harris side and that fantastic well-remembered 7-0 here, and the fact that we uh, they picked us the championship in 1961 by a point. Huge game tomorrow. It's a sellout crowd at Bramall Lane. There isn't a seat in any Sheffield United area in the ground. Uh, for that reason, we'd urge everybody to make sure that you get down to Bramall Lane nice and early, get your seat, get behind the team, enjoy a great game, we hope, and uh, we'll see what comes from there. Uh, but if this is the last time I speak to you for this season, thank you for the kind comments that you've made about these blogs that we do. Uh, we're going to try and do a few more over the course of the summer. Uh, where we'll talk about Sheffield United memorabilia in our famous museum and pick out players and things that they've won. Uh, but until that time, thank you for your support for what we do this season. Enjoy the match and be safe.